Uh, DC's just a chillin'. Just a chillin', eh, buds? Yeah. All right. We're gonna start today's video off. Something probably showed you guys in the last video. I already cleaned up the mess, but you can kind of see the stain on the floor. We're gonna start working on reinstalling this new transmission oil pan. And I'll talk to you in a little bit why I bought this one once we get the other one out. What I need to do right now is get my um, minivac, which is right there, and vacuum as much as I can out fluid from the dipstick hole. And then remove the RB skid pan. Which that's going to be another project in itself. Because I'm going to cut an access hole in that. So I can change the oil. Now I've had this MIDI back for a few years. And people always ask about it. It is well worth the money and investment. What model is this one? MV3300. I've used it so many times. I'm going to put it in the dipstick. Suck out. I can get about two liters out. That way, when I loosen the bolts to the oil pan of the transmission, a whole bunch of oil's not gonna start come pouring out and give you a shower if you're not prepared. This is why I don't understand why companies don't put a drain plug in them. I don't know. All right, let's, uh, everything's buried here, but I need to, Pull that out. Feed. Feed that down to the transmission as far as I can go. Plug it in here. Grab my airline. Plug it in, turn it on, start sucking. There we come. At least it's more red looking now than black how it looked previously. I'm actually pleasantly surprised. Pumped out about three liters, which is really good. Which means that's three less liters. It's not going to end up on my face or making a mess underneath when the oil pan is dropped. All right. Before I go underneath, I'm going to show you guys the mess. As you guys can see. That transmission pan is leaking like a sieve. And all over, but I see where the oil pan is, so I need to mark that where I can cut an access hole. So I'm just gonna mark the pan roughly where I want to be to cut my access hole that way. I can put my hand up and get at it. Oil pan is all covered in oil. So what happened is that I changed the filter and gasket. And how the setup works is that it clips on by six bolts. So you can only really go so far. So there's a couple theories. I had it installed, it didn't leak. Um, I started seeing it start to seep, so I tightened down the bolts a little bit further, and then a short time after that, well, you can really see now, it's uh, really starting to leak. And I don't like this design because I was doing some reading afterwards, and it's probably my fault, but I'll check it out once I get it off, is when you tighten these down too much, it actually distorts the metal a little bit. So we're gonna talk, go back to the clamping force. So if the clamping force is too tight here versus here, it's not gonna be an even clamping force across here. So it's gonna be distorted a bit and that's gonna allow oil to come through. And everybody knows with 
synthetic oil, as soon as there's a little bit of a hole or leak, everything just starts to come right out. So I got the new oil pan, which takes care of it. Doesn't use these stupid things for clamping it's actual bolts. We got a gasket. So we're gonna drop this out and then we're going to investigate. And then you can see right there with the little small oil pan there, it's got that little quick drain with the spigot. And then when I cut the hole in there, and then weld it back up so I can remove that access port will be enough to get my hand reach up inside put a tube on that open it up let it drain nice little easy project some welding some plasma cutting yeah should be good I don't think I've ever seen forest fire smoke so thick in my life and there's no forest fires even close to us that I am aware of. This is so thick, it's like a fog. It's like a total fog. It's kind of surreal almost. Now while Tomcat's in his cage looking for a kill, I need some tools and I need a special kit. Which is going to be interesting. Let's see if I can find it. I would like. Where are they? So, this was the tool I was looking for this little ratcheting wrench. Really good for tight spots. So, one thing that I do want to point out the Nag1 transmission, it's in the JK, many other vehicles across the Mercedes-Benz and Chrysler platforms is that there's another spot where it could leak from and I'm going to show you that when I get back underneath but it's not obviously where mine's coming from but I just want to show you guys as a pointer so underneath on the passenger side behind this cover is where your electrical harness goes into the transmission and that's another leak that's actually very common on these transmissions it's on the passenger side but I'm gonna go about, I'm gonna loosen top two in the middle, get my oil pan, put it underneath, and I'm gonna use the vacuum sucker to suck out whatever I can. This will lower that pan down enough. Perfect, I can get the evac in there and suck out the rest. So you can see the gap now, or I'm gonna put the evac sucker, but you can, uh, Definitely see evidence of oil going past the gasket there. All right, pan is removed. Now we need to, this is the old pan. Look, I have still some oil in it. Nice to see that it's still red. So now this is the new transmission pan, which is going to replace the old one where it has a flat surface. Which is actually very nice this is back the front you can tell because this is where the electrical bracket connects to all your goodies are in this little package so in case you're wondering this is uh, where I purchased it from something like this too bad was it a sponsored product our product given to you to do a review on because uh yeah canadian dollars i paid like 400 bucks for that oil pan but i think it's going to be worth every single penny of course in america it's going to be cheaper lots of attention to detail even right down to all your little screws and stuff magnetic um, drain plug detailed instructions right very important clean 
Oil and dirt from machine gasket surface of the transmission. Be careful not to damage the machine surface. Surface must be clean and dry. I just replaced the filter not that long ago. Now it says apply the PML gasket on pan or apply RTV gasket. Now this is uh, gives you instructions. And this is where you got to use your best judgment. So the kit does come with a cork gasket. I am not a fan of cork gaskets myself. So I got is some gasket paper. That I'm going to trace out a gasket and cut it out. So now I'm just back underneath, making sure all my gasket surfaces are clean. And then up in the corner there behind that shield, you can see where that plug is and that's not leaking yet but if you if that plug does start leaking it's not a very expensive fix i have not used this stuff in a while it's just making a big big turd mess i can take my gasket and then Squeeze it on there, firmly in place. Put another small bead up top here. Trimmed any excess gasket off. Oh, shit. Uh, fitting. Well, I never really calculated for the pan to be a little bit deeper. My gasket I made is destroyed, but oh well. Well, that makes me sad. There's lots of room. It'll fit. Well, unfortunately, that's it for today. Got not enough gasket paper to finish the job to make another gasket. I don't want to use that cork one. So I just got that one, the old pan cleaned up and we'll get back to this at a later date. I do however got the air regulator problem solved that when I fire on the compressor and there's no pressure in there, I have to hold that thing down is that I had a little spring in there. So once I remove the spring, it just naturally sits down in its place and I don't have that issue anymore. And it can't pop up because it's got a little ring around it. Problem solved. TC, this is my first day of not working. I'm gonna be off for a while. Now, are you happy to have me home? Um, are you happy to have me home? Um, are you? Oh, I know. I know you big suck. All right, we're back. Just getting things set up. I got that little hydraulic jack that we're gonna be using. More gasket paper came in today. We need two. Try to get up there, maybe you can see, but there's one mount right there, and then another one right there that already got loose. So I'm gonna put the impact on this one, get that one loosened off, and then raise that up. Theoretically, I test fitted it. I wasn't sure. It'll definitely fit. So it fits. I can slide underneath now, but there's still one dilemma. 
when I slide it underneath, I could actually still roll this gasket back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another gasket. And then I'm going to silicone it down. I'm going to put it flat down on a table. I'm going to put a weight on it. And that's going to help compress it, kind of seal it. So then when I put it underneath, it should stay, not have any issues rolling. We're going to find out. Because i got my new gasket material. If you have any doubts, this one says for sealing oil, coolant, and gasoline. I don't need to film this part again, but new gaskets come along pretty good. Alright. Here we go back at her. about a 30 pound weight on it help compress that gasket down so that it dries enough you don't have to worry about scraping her back so I got the ARB skid plate outside what I plan on doing is gonna cut on the ridge down up down take this piece cut it so it fits in there weld it just right on the edge so it hangs over so I can get a bolt in this side. Bolt in this side will just drill. Roll the nut on the opposite end. And I think that'll be good. Clean up all the sharp edges. Fit that up. This is probably set up really nice. Another half hour, I'll take it out. This should be good and sealed now. Yeah. Looks good, looks good. That's looking really good. Feeling really positive about that. I just went along with my blade and I trimmed everything off the outside. So now I'm ready to go underneath Put a light dab of silicone around it and then put her up and tighten her down and this theoretically should solve our issue with it leaking i just gotta remember to put that drain plug in otherwise things just might not end well That's the most important thing. Drain plug. Make sure it has its copper washer on there. All right. I can lower this down now perfect and then tighten up the bolts on each side There we have it. New pans all put in. Bolt it down. Guess it's the moment of truth now. Where I put oil in it. And uh, see if there's any leaks. All right, I picked up some mobile ATF plus four instead of AMS oil for the reason that 
I'm not gonna order like five liters of AMS oil because with shipping, it would just be more money. So, start to start pouring this up. All right. I'll probably put about two liters in the pan, maybe. It's also probably good that I'm doing this again as well because when that oil came out, even though it was clean, it still had kind of a, a rancid smell to it. I mean, given that could have just been the after effects in there as well. That's two. Three liters should easily get me into that transmission pan. All right. This will be four liters. Let's get the old girl started up. So far, so good. No leaks yet. Now at the piece I cut out, I'm going in a half an inch. As you can see right there how much I'm hanging over. That way I'll be able to drill a hole through the middle, get a bolt through there. So we're just not gonna weld it solid, just weld it on the side, put a piece across the middle because it doesn't need to be that serious. And then we'll get the other piece in, fit everything up. Drilling these holes. Alrighty. ARB skid pan is already go back in all right belly pans back on looking good I got my access hole let me just pull the light and then I'll get a little closer and I'll show you what I miscalculated on but it'll still work so as you can see the access hole will work really good except we're coming pretty close to the oil pan there so what I did is I had to cut one bolt down really short so it'll f sit flush with the nut that's gonna sit in there There you have it. Now I got my access cover for when I change oil. It won't be a big huge pain in the butt to do. It'll be way easier. Pretty happy with that. All right, this is the moment of truth. I'm gonna take the Jeep out for a rip, get the transmission oil nice and hot, and then let it sit overnight. And hopefully there's not gonna be an oil slick on the floor. That's what the main plan is. Man, I haven't even driven this thing in a long time. Check engine light, jeez. Just getting things booted up. I already know what the issue is. Easy fix, but I'll show you guys. I don't know what's with the scanner. Sure taking a long time to boot up today. Go through all the scanning. All right, P0113, intake air temperature circuit high. So what the issue is, or was, or still is, is that my 
intake air sensor wire. Either I didn't connect it properly or whatever. Anyways, it fell off and that's what gave me the code. All right, codes are clear, good to go. All right, let's go underneath. And it's completely dry. No seepage of any kind. What a relief. All right, time to shut it down, motherfucking beer time. I got a cheap beer. This is the uh, President's Choice Pilsner. It's the cheapest beer probably you could buy in Canada. Dollar a beer. And it tastes like it too. It's not very flavorable. Anyways, cheers everybody. Glad I got that transmission pen in. Glad it's not working. It's one less project I had to worry about. And then of course, when I took it for a spin, I had a check engine light that came on. Lucky for me, it was a quick fix. Hooked up the scanner, diagnosed it. Turns out that the sensor wire, the air temperature sensor wire just had popped out and that's taken care of and everything is good. We're moving on to the next projects now, trying to get the rest of the projects finished on the JKU. They can continue rebuilding the Ford 8.8 .8 differential. I need to get that done and the new suspension built and everything else. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. I'll see you guys in the next video.